So um, we're going to examine the placenta of this little girl that was born at 8.09 and it's now 10.48 p.m. And what you need as equipment when you're going to do a placenta examination is two large Ziploc bags to put the placenta into afterwards, a pair of scissors in case you need to re-trim the cord just to look at the blood vessels, some gauze squares sometimes come in handy, and a pair of non-sterile gloves. So, <clears throat> this placenta was birthed about an hour and 30 minutes after the birth of the baby. Um, we haven't weighed the baby yet, but it's a good sized baby. And the placenta is usually about the size of a dinner plate. And this baby's cord pulsed for over an hour, strongly. So the cord was left alone, nobody cut it. And the baby was able to balance out her blood in the way nature intended, and then after the cord stopped pulsing, we clamped and cut the cord, or the body did. So here, in our first look, we see the bag of waters that the baby was enclosed in. And um, what I'm going to do is turn this whole thing inside out so it's the way it was in the womb. So this is the side of the placenta that was closest to the baby and the membranes were up and around. The membranes go across the surface, the placental surface of the placenta, and then they go right up and around the baby. Mm. And so the baby was in here with water, the baby, and the umbilical cord in this little house, like this. And it looks like one bag of waters, but the water bag is actually two layers. And in this case, the outer layer or the chorion is intact like this. And the amnion has shredded and is around the cord. But that amnion inside here was at one time pasted against the chorion, the other bag. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a two layer bag. Mm. And so. <clears throat> Then we look at the insertion of the cord into the um, placenta and in this case the baby it's very uh, uniform because the baby has got the, or got the umbilical cord inserted into the placenta right in the center and then the placenta developed around that insertion of the cord. Usually the um, length of the cord is the same length as the length of the baby, about 19 or 21 inches. This one is a little bit less, so it's just a little bit on the short side. Hmm. The baby has about 3 inches on her belly button still. But um, the first thing I'm going to look at with this healthy, rich looking cord is I'm just going to dab the end of it and make sure that I have three blood vessels in the cord. Now where that blood dot comes up right away, that's the vein. It's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And then there are two arteries, two smaller arteries that you can see creating little dots. I don't know if you can get up close. And I think I'm going to um, just recut it so we get a clean view of this. Just take a little bit off. When the uh, father cuts the cord, or the partner cuts the cord, it's quite um, rubbery. And you really have to almost work to get through it because it's really rubbery. That's a jelly inside the cord called Wharton's Jelly. And I'm just going to pat that again so we can clearly see those three vessels coming up like little red dots. What is the jelly made of? The jelly is called Wharton's jelly after a Dr. Wharton, and mm. it's just protective of these three vessels. Yeah. So what you have here is, at the top, you have the two arteries, and then the vein is this bigger one down below. Mm -hmm. And when I squeeze it a bit, you get blood coming through those. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, in the baby before it's born, the arteries actually carry the deoxygenated blood, and the vein carries the oxygenated blood to the baby and then when the baby starts to breathe through its lungs there's a shunt in the heart that closes off and shunts the blood the opposite way for the rest of our lives. Hmm. Um, now I'm going to turn 
everything over and look at the side that was closest to the mother. So we call this the maternal side and you can see there are some clots on here. This is not placenta, this is just clot material from the mother where the mother was stopping bleeding. Mm -hmm. This baby was born right on her due date. The placenta is good and heavy, like that's probably a lot of what um, the mother felt when she felt the weight of the baby. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Yeah, it and it's um, uh, a little bit calcified. It's got some calcified deposit on it. Uh, deposits on it. When I rub it, um, it's it feels almost a little bit like sandpaper. Those are um, not significant whatsoever. It's just some people they get a little bit of calcium on the um, maternal side of the placenta. And um, the thing that we look at is is the placenta complete? And you can see if I hold it like that, it looks like there might be a piece missing there. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we cup it the way it would be in her body against the mother's womb. And then you can see it all fits together nicely like a jigsaw puzzle. I've been attending home births for 35 years and I've never seen a piece of retained placenta because we do wait for the placenta and the placenta comes out naturally. So it always comes out complete like this. So that's a healthy placenta that nourished a well-grown baby. And the baby grew inside that beautiful sack. Beauty. Yeah. Okay. Good. So then you can just...